morning. Hello internet. Cheers. I got all your questions last night. There were loads of them. So I just wrote down a bunch of it and I'll, I'll give it a go at answering the best as I can. From your perspective this is you watching a video of me answering questions. From my perspective this is me alone talking into my laptop. So it's slightly weird. But here I go. Question one. Toby, how are you doing mate? I'm really good, thank you. It's summer here in Toronto and it's really, really lovely. I haven't had to put a jacket on or a jumper for about two months. It's really, really hot all the time. The city is actually lovely uh, in the summer. It's fucking horrible in the winter, but I'm really, really making the most of the summer months. Um, if you were exiled to a country, what would that be? I think I think I'd want to go and live in Costa Rica. Um, they don't have an army, and they've got like the best wildlife ever, and I don't think they use any fossil fuels anymore. They're like completely divested. And there's just monkeys lying around, I imagine. Seems like a really, really cool place to live. I keep texting my family, telling them to just move to Costa Rica. And I think if they did, I'd go with them. Um, maybe start some sort of eco-hotel or something. I think they've, they've got a lot of eco-hotels. Do something like that. Go live with monkeys. I know they've got, they've got caterpillars that can kill you. And they live in shoes and stuff, but... I think it's a cool place to go. Um, what happened to the squirrel your mum was looking after? Yeah, so my mum rescued a squirrel. She like disturbed a nest and the squirrel babies fell out on the ground. They were like really, really, really young, like only a couple of weeks old. Um, and one of them died and the other one she nursed back to health. Amazingly, like squirrel babies don't even, they can't even piss by themselves. They have to like like be, oh, it's just looking after a tiny little thing is a nightmare. Um, she had to like feed it with a tiny paintbrush of milk every two hours for about a month, and then eventually it sort of started looking less like a fetus. And then, um, and then she gave it to my grandfather, who's like amazing with animals. Um, used to have horses in a monkey sanctuary when my mum was growing up. Uh, and he's sort of like an animal whisperer and he looked after it and then I think he released it into a park near his house so it's all good it's all good the squirrel lives I imagine as long as it hasn't been you know eaten by a dog or something um, what would uh, would you rather be fluent in all human languages or be able to talk to animals that is a really good question um, on the one hand, you know, traveling around the world and speaking to everyone would be really cool, but on the other hand, like, talking to dogs and stuff would be amazing. I think I'm going to have to go with, yeah, talking to animals. I'd like to talk to animals. I'd like to know, know what's going on in the dolphin's head. Um, what's the one moment in your life you wish you could redo? None. You can't have any regrets. If you have regrets... Well, they're pointless. And anyway, if you, t if you take one decision back, then you end up taking them all back. You can't have one without the other. All decisions in your life have, left, have led you to this exact moment. So you can't have the bad decisions without the good. So nothing. What is your pet peeve? Um, people eating really loudly. I can't stand it. I need to get better at it because you've got to live and let live, but... Fucking hell, I don't like it. <laughs> Especially when it's gum. Because that's not even nutritious. You're not even getting anything out of gum. So what's the point? Just with your mouth closed. Just eat with your mouth closed. Um, where am I? Uh, what would be the worst superpower? Me and Caitlin used to talk about this for ages. Think of the worst superpowers. I think the worst one we came up with was to turn into a laptop once permanently. <laughs> I 
or the power to have other people read your thoughts. Like the reverse tele telepathy. That's pretty shit. Um, if you could go to only one music festival, which one would you go to? Um, I guess Glastonbury. For those who don't know, it's like it's, I think it's the biggest in the world. It's in um, it's in England in the countryside somewhere, a, like a couple of hours from Stonehenge, and it's amazing, and it's weird. At night, it's weird. There's a whole area of it called Shangri-La that sort of opens up in the night time and a lot of art and strange bars and weird characters. I like English music festivals. Like Coachella and stuff like that is not really my vibe. It's too clean and, and nice. I like something a little bit weirder. Um, if you could have dinner with one person, dead or alive, who would it be? I think David Attenborough. He's my hero. I don't actually know that much about him, to be honest, like, um, apart from the basics, but I've just watched his documentaries since I was young, and he's unbelievable. He's so amazing. Um, so, yeah, I'd like to pick his brain over dinner. Um, dead, if he was dead, though, I guess, um, I guess Hunter S. Thompson would be a pretty interesting dinner guest. I heard this story about him, like, um, ordering like six banana daiquiris and six banana sundaes when he was having um, lunch with Tom Wolf, and then he and then he ate them all, and then and then just went waiter again and ordered it all again. So that might be quite interesting. Um, da -da 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 -da. If you could go back in time, would you change anything? <laughs> Same deal. We know from about about regrets and stuff. You can't go back. You can't change anything. We know from to, um, time traveling movies that it doesn't go well. Whatever you change, it changes everything, and then you end up messing up the future. Also, can someone please explain to me the logic behind Terminator? Like that she, he, she, she's gonna get killed by the Terminator. So someone comes back to protect her, to allow her to have the kid in the future that's gonna save the world. But the guy who comes back to protect her is the guy that impregnates her to have the kid. So if he'd never gone back in time in the first place, how did he have the kid to go? It doesn't make any sense. It's a weird time loop. I guess Terminator assumes that time is circular. Is that what... Is that what so could please, can someone explain it to me? Um, do you have a favourite song at the minute? Yeah. I've been listening to Chemical Brothers' song, the new one called Go. That's really amazing. It's just so catchy. Yeah, I've been listening to that a lot. How long would you survive in a zombie apocalypse? Me and Rachel Scarston, who plays Elizabeth, were talking about this the other day. Because Toronto's in the water, so I reckon best bet is to go down to the waterfront and get a boat, steal a boat. If someone's in it, I guess I'm going to have to hit them with a brick. Um, stay on the boat and then wait for winter and hopefully in the winter times the zombies freeze but we look we look this up and apparently apparently zombies don't freeze in the winter they're just like their blood slow like s slows like when you put vo vodka in the fri freezer it doesn't it doesn't freeze because there's something in it the, I guess the alcohol in it but the, and there's a protein in zombie blood but, I mean like they don't even exist and we looked it up and there's some zombie researcher called Kate something or other who's like explaining all of this stuff. K Kate, what are you talking about? Zombies aren't real. How? It, say, it, says, it says like she has observed through like looking at zombies and stuff. What do you mean observed? When you observe them in your own mind. They're not real. <laughs> You're absolute lunatic. Um, so if, I guess if, if, the, if the winter doesn't kill him I don't know. I don't think I survive very long. Maybe I'm on the twelfth floor of my my building, so maybe I could just stay up here. But then I just run out of food. I don't think I'm built to survive something like that. I wish I was. I wish I could like, you know, grow my own crops and and I knew how to like fix a car and stuff. But I'd be fucking useless in a zombie apocalypse. I guess I can run really quick, but no, I don't think I'd survive very long. What can you tell us about season three? I can't tell you much, but I can tell you that we've shot 
a few scenes that are going to make you cry. <laughs> they're going to make you cry. And they're really, really good. We shot, um, I can't say what it is, why or when or what, but there's a dance in it. There's a dance that we filmed. And it's really lovely. It made everyone cry. You're going to cry. Um, who's your favourite artist? I really like this um, woman called Yayoi Kusama. She's a Japanese artist. I think she's in her 80s now. And she uh, she lives in a mental asylum. She's, she, um, she sectioned herself, I think. She she's hallucinates and sees strange patterns and stuff. And she she did this thing called... Oh, I can't remember the name of it, but they're called, they're called infinity rooms. Um, and they're like um, mirrored rooms that you... You get like a well. When I went and saw it, there was such a massive queue that I waited about three and a half hours to get in, and then I only got to stand in the room for like thirty seconds, which is a bummer. I wanted to spend like an hour in there. It's like so. There's got mirror on all sides. You go in, and there are all these little fairy lights hanging from the ceiling, and the lights go on as you're in there. And because there are mirrors on all sides, the the, the little fairy lights are reflected infinitely in every direction. You know when you stand in front of a mirror on both sides and you try and look behind your own head and it's like and goes back forever but you can't really see it because your head's in the way you can see around your own head because there's mirrors everywhere so you can see in every direction forever it's amazing it looks it feels like being inside of inside of a, a galaxy or something i know we're inside of a galaxy anyway but like being in space you can see the lights like reflected to an infinite plane it's the only time that i've ever seen infinity represented in art Really, really cool. Um, have you read any good books whose adaptions, uh, adaptations you'd like to star in? Yeah, my favourite book is um, Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy. It's so dark and um, and brutal and brilliant. Um, it's about a gang of um, uh, they're called the Glanton Gang, and they and they go across America scalping. Um, Native American tribes and stuff and then they just lose their minds and just start scalping everyone and, and everything and they're led by this guy called the judge who's like I think Time magazine called him like the seventh 17th best villain of all time in literature he's like he's got no hair he's huge sort of uh, baby with who's who's into law and the balance of the planets and um, and the elements and stuff he's like incredibly smart but also a complete psychopath um, and the lead in it is the, the main character is a, it's just a boy called the kid um, and whenever they make that film I think Ridley Scott's got the rights to make it I think I might be wrong someone's got the rights to make it um, it could be the best movie of all time I think not just the best western but the best movie and I'd love to be in that play the kid or something or whatever it might get made in 20 years or something and by then I'll, I'll be able, old enough to play someone someone else in it but if, if you're if you're up for an amazing read that is also horrific read read that book um i are you drawn to oriental philosophy yes i am drawn to or, oriental philosophy um another recommendation is alan watts i love him um, he's a uh, 